In this clip I will solve the uh, example questions which were appended to the end of the lecture notes document for topic 3, that was the probability topic. Uh, here we have uh, the questions, let's start with example question 1. And the probability that a student completes all the exercises set for a particular course is 0.16. Uh, part A, using a probability tree, derive the probabilities for the number of students who complete all the exercises from a random sample of two students. So, okay, so we have uh, question one. Question one, that's called P, the probability of completing all exercises and here that turns out 0 0.16 so we should use a tree for two students so the tree will look something like this let's start here the first student will either complete or not complete the exercises the probabilities are 0.16 for completing or 0.84 for not completing all of them. So then the second student again will either complete or not complete, complete or not complete. So we have C, complete, not complete, complete, not complete. So we have four different outcomes A, B, C and D. Here the probability was again uh, 0.16 here it was 0.84 here since these are independent events of course I should mention that that's important information whether the second student completes is independent of what the first student did. So now what are the probabilities for these four outcomes? We'll use a calculator. As they're independent events, uh, we can uh, calculate uh, the probability. So uh, first write it down formally. What we need for A is the probability that student one completes and student 2 completes okay and 0.16 that was the probability for completion and that will just be the probability that student 1 completes times the probability that student 2 completes and the reason that we can that was an equal that we can simplify this problem is because the two events were independent. You know this formula is only valid because of independence, so here we calculate 0 0.16 times 0 0.16 and it turns out the outcome here is 0 0.0. 256 because I just calculated that you can test that as uh, again now for the uh, second for uh, B outcome B what's the probability it's the joint probability of student 1 completing times the probability that student 2 is not completing student 1 completing is 0 0.16 student 2 not completing is 0 0.84 the probability here turns out to be 0 0.1344 that was I should underline the final result here to make that blue uh, outcome C is student 1 not completing student 2 completing that's 0 0.84 times 0 0.16 the same result 0 0.1344 and uh, non-completing uh, we have 0 0.84 times 0 0.84 uh, if you calculate that what you'll find is that this is 0 0.7055 so let's check what the actual question was again what using the probability tree derived the probabilities for the number of students who complete all the exercises from a random 
uh, from a random sample of two students. Okay, so what's the probability that everyone completes? Before before we answer that question, let's uh, ask ourselves what are the what are the possible outcomes in uh, in this experiment? We have either not completing, one completing, or two completing. Not completing, that's only outcome D. Okay, so the uh, the, uh, the nodes that uh, that contribute to that is D. One completing, here we are looking at outcome B and C, two completing, that's outcome A. And what are the probabilities for A? It was 0.0256. For zero, it was 0 0.7055, and for one, it's the sum of these two, and that is 0 0.2688. So now the answer to part A, what's the probability that both complete? The answer uh, to this is this one here. 0.00256 that is the answer to question A and what's the answer to uh, what's the second question using the information from the tree what's the probability that in a random sample of two students only one student will have completed all the exercises um, only one student that is the uh, second outcome here that is this result. Okay, that's the answer to part B of the question. We can quickly look at the multiple choice versions. Uh, given a random sample to students, the probability that both students will complete all the exercises, we just said that's 0.0256. In probability only one student will have completed the exercise, that was 0.2688. So let's tackle the second question. Um, so uh, you're running a zoo, perhaps or not, but you're interested in uh, the growth of male, the weight of male elephants, and we know that that weight is normally distributed. Uh, here's the information: normally distributed, an average of 5,000 kilograms, and a standard deviation of 500. So let's go to. Question two. Mm, here we go. Question two. So we know that the weight is normally distributed with an average of five thousand and standard deviation of five hundred. So now, in particular, first question is as follows. A uh, colleague claims that 60% of all grown elephants are heavier than the average of 5,000. Is this statement consistent with the above information? Well, for that let's draw us first a little picture. Uh, some of you may immediately know the answer, and that, that's fine, but uh, we'll draw a little picture. We'll need it later for reference as well. If we have a normal distribution, we know it will look something like this. Well, that's a Beauty, where the peak is at the average, that's here 5,000. And you know that the area represents the probability of certain outcomes. Now, you know that, so if we are interested in uh, the probability of male elephants being heavier than the average, then what we are graphically interested in is this area here. Okay, and you know that given this is a normal distribution, the size of this area is going to be 0 0.5, because a normal distribution is symmetric around its mean. That means there's 50% chance to be larger than the average, 50 smaller. So immediately we know that the claim of your colleague is incorrect. Okay, um, 
So that is the first answer. It's incorrect. Let me just get rid of this. Um, so the answer uh, is no, it's not consistent with this information. The multiple choice version, uh, we question is which of the following statements it is wrong. 50% of all male elephants are heavier than the average, that's right. 50% are lighter than the average, that's right. More than 68% of elephants are lighter than 5,000, that's wrong. Okay, it doesn't uh, represent to, uh, it's not the same as statement A, but that's wrong. D, the median weight is equal to the average weight in symmetric distribution. As for the, the normal distribution, that is correct. So part C is incorrect, and we were asked for the statement which is wrong. So that is statement C. That's more or less equivalent to A, or it asks for the same knowledge. Now, part B, if there were 200,000 grown male elephants, how many of these would you expect to weigh between four and 6,000 kilograms? So, we'll go to um, part B, let's just write down, we have 200,000 elephants, and we want to know how many are between 4,000 and 6,000 elements. So what we'll do is we'll first calculate the probability that one elephant is between 4,000 and 6,000 and then we will multiply this probability with our 200,000. Okay, If each of them has probability, a certain probability then we can, with this calculation, we will get to that later, we'll find out how many we expect. So firstly, we're going to start calculating this probability, the probability that the weight is between 4 and 6,000 kilograms. This little graph, of course, was for our random variable W, which was normally distributed with the above. So we know, and you know that from a different clip, so I can be a little uh, a little quicker here, we need to translate this entire problem into uh, the said world, and we do that using our, to, to get from here to here, we use our translation formula Z equals our random variable W minus the mean of W divided by the standard error of W. So, and then we get into the uh, st standard normal world, the distribution of Z, which has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So, our probability, so this is going to be equal to the probability that and we apply our translation formula to the first value to 4000 4000 that is the little w minus the mean and now the mean let me just do this with different colors here we have the mean of w and this one is the um, standard deviation of w I label it S because I assume that comes from some sample estimate. Okay, so let me just in that formula we want to uh, use the S and the mu will always come from the distribution. So here we have our formula 4000 minus 5000 divided by the standard deviation which is 5 hundred so let's complete this that is going to be smaller than z now because we've translated and z is going to be smaller than now the we apply the tra translation formula to the 6000 6000 minus and now again our two population param our two parameters minus the mean 5,000 kilograms divided by the standard deviation which is 500. Okay, so these two probabilities are, are the same. 
Now we know these type of probabilities we can't find in the table. We can find in the standard normal tables probabilities of the form um, Z is smaller than something. So we need to translate translate this. So <coughs> how do we do this? Let's just indicate here. Here's our 4,000. Here's our 6,000. That will translate in the uh, set world into some values which we haven't calculated yet. It's 4,000 minus 5,000 divided by 500. Actually, we can already see what that value is here. 4,000 minus 5,000 is negative 1,000 divided by 500. So we'll get a value of, uh, let's not pretend we are stupid, minus 2, so that's this value here. Minus 2 is smaller than Z, is smaller than 6,000 minus 5,000 is 1,000 divided by 500, that is 2. Okay, so, so what we are after is this probability, the area in between these two boundaries. And that's the same as this probability which we asked in the question. Now we need um, probabilities of the form smaller than something. So what do we do? Uh, let's use different colors, green. We know that we can calculate this green probability and then we could subtract the red probability and what we are left with is the center uh, bit. So we will now decompose our problem into this. The green probability is of course nothing else but probability that Z is smaller than 2 and we subtract the red probability and the red probability is of course just the probability that Z is smaller than negative 2. Okay, um, so we need these two values. We need to read them off uh, the table so let me just quickly um, load a table here. Uh, here we go, here's our normal table. We've got to increase this a bit. We need to find, for instance, first one is uh, 2, the probability that set is smaller than 2. So we go to, we'll find uh, 2 is here, the first column is 0, that's 0 0.9772. So the green probability is 0 0.9772 minus the red probability, probability that set is smaller than negative 2, we'll find negative 2, 0 in the first column, 0 0.0228. So we'll have all point o two two eight and uh, since I don't want to make a mistake I'll use the calculator all point nine seven seven two minus all point o two two eight equals nine five four four all point nine five four four so the result is 0.9544. So that is the result. For, let me just highlight them yellow. That was the question. And here's our result. Again, we first had to translate it into Z, then we had to, to translate it into smaller than problems which you could read off the table. Uh, let's go to the questions. Um, So that's the answer to B, C, if, ah, no, sorry, we haven't solved the question yet. The, uh, the question was, if there were 200,000 elements, how many would you expect to be in that range to, to get the solution to this? What we have to do is we have to 
acknowledge that we have 2,000 elephants and we multiply with that probability okay so uh, we expect 95.44 percent of these 200,000 to be in that weight range and that is 190,880 190 880 so that is the solution to the question um, so part C again if there were 200,000 how many would you expect to weigh more than 6.5 let's see so we go to part uh, C of the question so firstly we want the probability that an elephant weighs more than six and a half thousand and uh, again we have two hundred thousand elephants we have the same information as above so uh, what we are after now is uh, the probability here okay if that is 6.5 k what's the probability that an elephant may weighs more than that so we know we first got to translate that into uh, a set probability so that is equal probability that set is larger than and now we apply our standardization formula 6500 minus 5000 divided by 500 that is 1500 divided by 500 that's of course probability that Z is larger than 3 now we know what we want to do is we need to translate that into a problem that involves probabilities of Z being smaller than something so that is of course the same as 1 minus the probability that Z is smaller than 3 okay and uh, that probability we can read off the table 3 we have down here 3.0 it's the first column 0.9987 so that is the same as 1 minus 0.9987 uh, that is 0.0013 so how many elephants do we expect to be larger than that it will be 200,000 times 0.0013 and um, there we go 0.0013 times 200,000 260 okay not that many Here's our solution to uh, part C. All right, now uh, that is just another to be lighter than 3,500. You can uh, try exactly the same with this one. You'll find out that there is uh, possibly only an approximate solution. The approximate solution is going to be D. Okay. Um, actually in fact the exact solution would be 260 again you, you'll try and find out why that is the case so let's quickly look at uh, part 3 question 3 and 4 are really theory questions uh, the answer to these is which of the following equations relates conditional marginal and joint probabilities of events A and B uh, we know that this is space uh, the base formula we have to refer to here and part C is a version of the correct version of the base formula and question 4 uh, which of the following equations relating conditional margin joint probabilities of events A and B is correct if outcomes are independent we know that's a special case of base and that's part D is the correct one 
um, it, go back to I'm not going to explain that here go back to the lecture notes or lecture recording to uh, see this now the last question I'm going to tackle here is the following university question 5 university administration is interested in the demographic composition of its students 56% uh, of all students are male 11 are overseas students uh, so we have two characteristics for each student, uh, their gender and whether they are home or overseas students. If the two random variables, gender and origin, were independent, explain how you would calculate what percentage of students you would expect to be female overseas students and what percentage of students you would expect to be male home students. So um, let's first just ensure we write down what we, what we know. So we are looking at question five. We know the probability for being a male student is 56%, or 0.56, and the probability for being an overseas student was 0.11. Now, this immediately implies that the probability of being a female student is 0.44 because you are either male or female and the probability of being a home student is 1 minus 0.11 that is 0.89 because either you are home or overseas student. Um, so what we are after now is the probability that a student is female and overseas okay now let's go back to the question the question is now do we have to use a uh, base formula or do we have to can we use the formula if we have independent uh, events and the question actually says if the two random variables gender and origin were independent Okay, so we are given the assumption that they're independent. So in that case, we can calculate this as the probability of being female times the probability of being an overseas student. But that is as independence was assumed. Okay, that was important. If we hadn't done that, if the question hadn't given this information, we couldn't do it this way and of course we have these values probability of being female is 0.44 probability of being overseas 0.11 and the solution is 0.0484 and we'll also ask for probability for being a male and a home student and we do that exactly in the same manner probability of male times probability being a home student that is 0.56 times 0.89 so we will have 0.4984 okay almost 50% probability of being a male home student so that is uh, the solution to question uh, five. So the, the multiple choice version here uh, all casts this in terms of a joint frequency table, which of course you could. Uh, you can see the main structure of the table here. J1 is pro, uh, male and home. We just calculate the probability as 0 0.4984. So you can see of the four solutions, actually only one has the right solution. Uh, so with only this one first you would already know that C is the right solution. You can just confirm that J4 that was female overseas students is indeed 0 0.0484. So we know C is the correct answer. Yeah. That is it. Enjoy!